Okay, Adrian. That that was the class right there, man. That was a good class. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go into the chords cuz you you definitely have the melody and you have the uh, you know, the keys and the and the theory uh, for the soloing and improv. So here are the chords. All right. I'm going to go through it. It's going to be an E minor 7th, right? And then I call this I'm just going to do like a like a I can do a B major but I'm going to add the E as a root, right? All right? So I'm adding an E. That's the E right here as a root. And then I'm going to go into an E minor, a full E minor. And then I'm going to go into an A dominant 7, right? Right? And then I'm going to go into a D7. And then I'm going to go into a G major 7, G major 7. And then I'm going into a C major 7. All right, again, E minor 7. Partial B major with the E as a root. And then I'm going to an E minor. A dominant 7. D7 or D dominant 7. G major 7th, C major 7th, and then from here I'm going to go, alright, so what I did there is I went C, D, E, so that's 3, 5, 7, E minor 7th, and then I went to my 5th fret, to the D7, and then I go to my third fret to the G to the uh, C major seven. Now here's the thing: I'm going to go to a B minor seventh. This is the trick right here. So when I'm at the B minor seventh, I'm going to go. I'm keeping the second fret bar, and then I'm opening everything. Playing that, and I'm gonna play an A, um, yeah, A sus two, right? No, I'm sorry, an, an A seven, yeah, and back to the C major seven. Then I'm gonna go E minor seventh, E flat minor seventh, D seven. D flat minor seventh, C major seventh, B minor seventh, A dominant seventh. And I do it again. E minor seventh, E flat minor seventh, D seven, uh, D flat minor seventh, C major seventh, B minor seventh, A dominant seventh. All right, so that was a very basic way that I played that. All right, now. You could definitely, what I would do is I would chop the video up, stop, you know, pause it, and go back through it, do it in segments, right? All right, so I'm going to play it, um, playing around with the bass line. Okay, so when I go through this song, I'm just going to add a few things to it, all right? So I played it one way, a basic way. This is another way I'm going to play it, all right? So you can be creative with the chord structure. There, there are different things you can do. Right, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so what I did there, 
is I kind of added a few things like a little bass line when I went into the uh, when I went into that I kind of added a little bass line I was kind of writing the bass throughout the song and and playing the uh, playing the chords as well now uh, there's a part here that's going to be kind of tricky it's when you're in the B minor seventh All right, I'm focused on the the uh, fifth string because that's where my root is with the two chords. But you know, it can vary what you do as far as hitting the rest of the strings. I like to like just pluck the second and third string as I ride the bass. So, so I'm here. All right, you can even for the A dominant seven. This is, this is a pretty good trick too. You can play the A dominant seven or A seven with your uh, ring finger on the second fret of the fourth string and the pinky on the second fret of the second string. Because the following note is going to be a C major seventh, and all you have to do is slide so that your uh, index finger is on the third fret, and your middle finger will just have to rest itself on the fourth fret of the third string. Uh, your your uh, ring finger and pinky will always be where they need to be if you approach the A dominant seventh this way. Ring finger on the second fret of the fourth string and pinky on the second fret of the second string. And you just slide right into position. Slide right into position. there. Sometimes I'll do that. All right, so what you saw me do there, all right, when I went, when I did the, the walk down, sometimes I'll play a major seventh, a D major seventh, because it's, it just adds to that, that, um, that motion, that, you know, uh, the tones it gives it like a nice pretty kind of a feel to it and then you go back to a uh, a D flat minor seventh and then you C major seventh right and then all right so you got a couple of things there and also understand too that um, if I were to I could I can do like a D major seventh there uh, for another reason because you know when you're it's you know what I you you have your your dominant seven there, but I just kind of added like a C sharp in there. Yeah, I added a C sharp. So that gives like a a pleasant kind of attention. There's there's a dissonant tension where it kind of sounds almost like it's it's different, almost like in an awkward kind of a way, and you're waiting for the next the next position to kind of resolve it. Um, this is a bright kind of a sound. It goes with the downward uh, projection of the of the uh, chord structure, right? Because if you notice, it's almost like a chromatic movement that I'm doing within each chord, right? So adding something there um, adds a pleasant kind of attention. The second reason is if you notice. If I go a whole step, I'm at my C major seventh. So I'm kind of I'm kind of blending that that in there because the C major seventh was already played um, in different parts in the song up to this point. So I'm kind of ready for it. It's not something that just you know a major seventh wasn't in there. It had been in there. So you know that's why I'll sometimes put that in there, but you can you can leave it at a uh, at a dominant seven when you're doing the walk down. You yeah, know, you can do it that way. Or you know, so so play around with those little subtle things because it makes a lot of sense and it's good for you for your growth as far as the learning and, and the theory and all those things. 
you, you're going to develop your own kind of theory where you're, you're listening for certain things that might, might hit you personally, right? And there might be reasons why you, you put certain things in your compositions. It's like, it's like uh, people who, you know, when people are cooks, you know, in their family, they, they have special dishes that they make, you know, that, that grandma used to make or that, your, you know, your mom used to make a certain kind of a dish. But she'll, it's special because she puts her own uh, different ingredients in it and just a certain way she does it. It's the same thing when you approach um, your interpretations of certain chord uh progressions right you can add certain things in there and it makes it it makes a, a big difference believe it or not but you have to know how to do it properly do it the right way so that it doesn't sound wrong right uh, and we'll go into that whole thing about sounding right and sounding wrong okay um, but I hope this helps you you did a fine job today there's a lot of things that that uh I was surprised that you, you picked up that quickly. All right. So excellent, man. And um, just keep working on this because uh, the, chord, the chord progressions are the thing that, that uh, I know is a challenge for you, but you're doing well on it. But this song will help you a lot. All right. So anyway, thank you very much, and I will see you on Friday. God bless.